It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Philadelphia Eagles. And it comes your way next. Open back in 2003. Have a look at the link. Lincoln Financial Field where 70,000 are rocking and ready to go in Philadelphia. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Indianapolis Colts and the Philadelphia Eagles. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them? and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away. I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's the putter, Rigoberto Sanchez on to get us started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. Boston Scott on the return from his end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Philly's offense getting ready and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. Tremendous production in college at two different universities and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield and don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. They'll start on the ground. It's Rashad Penny. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Play action. Here's Hertz. Now he'll escape to his right. He's got a man complete. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. It's a gain of 34. The things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone. This time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us for their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. From the gun, a give to Gainwell. He'll get this down to the 38. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. From the 38, Hurts. His throw incomplete. 
They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Here's Hurts to throw. Setting up the screen with Gainwell. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good, and the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. Well, when they began that opening drive, they didn't have the best field position, but they were able to move the ball enough, Charles, to just get in his range to take the 3-0 advantage. Absolutely, because considering where they began that series, I think they're pretty happy to be sitting at 3-zip right now. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. Bringing them out, now in his fourth season after, of course, a memorable 2019 debut. It's Gardner Minshew. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. Now a guy who grew up just south of here across the river, Jonathan Taylor. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the plays we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. We can make this one pretty simple. Rocked up all his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Fielded just inside the 20. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And the Eagles will have it, taking over first and 10. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10.
They go play action with Hurts. He's going deep for Brown. They've got his man complete. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And that's how you start a drive, because you know they had this play in their back pocket, waiting for the right time to unleash it. And boy, did they pick the right opportunity. Unleashed it big time, and that was also a big time throw. And that wound up traveling at even 58 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Throwing his hurts. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. And that's an early scramble to be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Gainwell. Trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. And Goddard's got it! Touchdown, Eagles! A one-yard touchdown pass as his guys are able to extend their lead. That's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Elliott good with a PAT, and the lead grows to 10 0. So that drive, four plays, and the drive was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Dallas Goddard. So an early 10-0 lead for him now as they kick it away. Taking it about the one. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Play action, it's Minshew. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now Minshew. Now this will be swung out wide for Taylor. Now he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Let's do this, man. Come on, baby. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Kylan Branson, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Up the middle, here's Taylor. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Minshew sets to throw. That's going to be caught along the sideline, and what a job of keeping his feet in bounds. They say that's a catch. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Minshew. And that's caught by the tight end, Granson. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Minshew, first and ten. This one completes Alec Pierce. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They run once more with Taylor. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Minshew throwing on third down. And he'll just get rid of it. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range, no sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. This will be a 34-yard attempt. Gay's kick is good, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. 
So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. game back with it a touchdown now as the kickoff's away and the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone Philadelphia getting sent to take the field and the offense coming back out here plenty of energy ready to roll looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown Charles their last time out and that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that and tackled down after a gain of three leaves him with one yard to go on third down and that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line yeah defensively all i'm thinking is that on that play get me to third down get me into a position where i can make one more play and get my defense off the field so they just need one yard here to pick up the first down They'll try and run for it with Penny. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. But first down, Hurts. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Well, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. To throw on second and 10, Hurts. Be incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There was a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage, and that throw had no shot. Now they face a third and ten after back to back incompletions. Hurt sets up to throw it. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. Well, hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. Back deep, Isaiah McKenzie. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? 
They say just outside the 20 yard line. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now Minshew on first and ten. And his throw here is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and ten. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. Give the sack to Fletcher Cox. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Now back to throw. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. Now that one hurts defensively. They force him into third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Out of the gun is Minshew. They're going right back to Pittman. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. here, second and 11. They'll go play action here with Minshew. And his throw is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Looking to throw. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And Gay knocks this one through, and that'll bring him back within four. 
So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Fields it right around the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. 10-6 the score after one right here on EA Sports. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they've got it with a second and ten. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. They'll get this out wide to Penny. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Here's Hurts to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Aaron Sipos on to punt as he'll get this one away now. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. They'll set up to throw. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. A give for Taylor running right side. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. 
end result of that one, a nice four yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. From the 44, Minshew. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Running straight ahead, Taylor. Room here to run. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole. And then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off. But you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. On first down, he'll drop to throw. He's got his man. It's Pierce. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Off play action, it's Minshew. To the right side and into the hands of the tight end, Granson. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Michael Pittman, a 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts have moved out in front. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put it to the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was capped off on the touchdown catch by Michael Pittman. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. 
Well, these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. Looking to throw on second down. Hurts. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Goddard. That'll give him eight that time. And now two yards to go on third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's Aaron Sipos now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now a hit and a loose football. Inside the 20. And he will bring this down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. So not only do they get the fumble recovery on the punt, but now look at this field position. He almost took it the distance. And the ability to not just make the play, but turn it into something big, that's what coaches harp on all the time. How do we create big plays that'll change the game? And that may have been one that just did. So now just like that, things change dramatically. It's first and goal. Throwing his hurts. Now he's got it. J. Brown, and the Eagles are able to move back in front. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Elliott on for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. To the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Indy set to go on offense once more. Touchdowns on back to back drives. So a very good flow right now offensively. Hard to slow them down, too, because they are locked in. Feel like the offense coordinator is a little bit ahead of the defensive guys right now. They're beating them to the punch with their play calls. They've got a nice rhythm they're locked into. How can the defensive guys come up with something that will disrupt that flow? That's what they're seeking right now. Well, it's been an exciting sequence to watch. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
Hassan Reddick coming through with a stop there and a tackle for loss to boot. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Minshew sets to throw. He's got Granson over the middle. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Now Minshew, he finds Taylor, complete. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. Yeah, on third down, you know those pass rushers, they're in the starter's block. They're just waiting for the pistol to fire. You can almost hear the defensive coaches on the sideline pre-snap. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Really good job there of identifying it and making the play to force for it down. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. It's taken to the 26. We call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out, but I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. They begin with a run by Penny. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Again, it's Penny. And he's got Rome. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 40 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. Penny, a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Hurts throw taken in by Watkins here. And they'll get him to the ground, and he has another first down at the Colts' 32-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the draw, this is Penny. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. As I watch that play unfold, stereotypes were being broken left and right. As a corner, you're often back there guarding against the pass. But how about that diagnosis and read and getting into the backfield and making a nice play and a tackle?
Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Hurts. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Watkins. And they're going to move it down the inside the 25. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Well, they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. The kick by Elliott is good, and that'll make this a seven-point game. So they get the three. It was fourth and one, and I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's true. right? Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They trail 20-13 to 13 our score as they have it first and 10. Here's Minshew. He'll get this one complete there to Pittman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis in this first half of action. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. Throwing again on second down. Minshew. He'll get this one to Pittman. And he'll wind up getting this to the 32, a play that started at the 16, and that's how many yards they get. First down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Minshew, first and 10. Over the middle, hauled in by Pierce. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. A lot 
Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Dancing to his left. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Second and three from the nine. They're going to look to throw. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. That sack courtesy of the effort of Hassan Reddick. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks him backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Gay's kick is good, and that'll bring him back within four. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. So just eight kicks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. Taken in at the three. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Colts. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200-plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, they, too, were able to take advantage of a soft secondary as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. Fielded just outside the goal line. 
And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Here's Michael Pittman and the rest of this offense getting set for the upcoming drive. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now Minshew on first and 10, flushed out right. Pass complete downfield, it's Pierce. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. He'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. And just not enough on the throw there, down around his feet and incomplete. Well, no surprise there. He was looking for one of his favorite targets again as soon as he left the pocket. But the coverage was good downfield. They got right to the receiver and helped prevent that completion. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. Out of the gun is Minshew. And that's caught by the tight end, Granson. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. They'll set up a throw. Escaping the pressure right. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So pass interference, the call there. Always, obviously, Charles, such a subjective call. You agree with the penalty? Well, from where we're standing right now, I think the officials are tightening things up here in the second half. Maybe a defender gets away with that in the first, but this time the flag comes out, and I think it's a good call. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll be second in a couple. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. From the five, here's second and two. Looking to throw. Throw left side, complete. That's McKenzie. Touchdown, Colts! Isaiah McKenzie, a five-yard touchdown. And the Colts have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half.
Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open in the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and that gives him a three-point lead. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. But first down, Hurts. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. To throw again on second down. Hurts fires the quick slam. A.J. Brown's got it. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. It's a gain of 16 and an eagle first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts it towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Being chased out left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. From just shy of midfield, Hurts throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On second down, here's Penny. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. 
Here's Hurts to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. From the right hash, and call it an even 50 yards. The kick by Elliott is good, and that draws him level. It's 23-23. It's another field goal, his third of the game. Maybe not exactly what you're looking for, but it does bring him level now. I like how you put that in there, it brings him level, right? Because if you're talking about kicking... Bringing that soccer analogy in. I love that one. I love that one a lot. You don't want to go for it on fourth down and come away with nothing, right? Go ahead and kick the ball. Make sure you get some points. Even if it's a safe call, I think it's the right call. separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. Taking it about the one. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he'll get nothing out of that one. So he stopped for no gain. And it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch. But even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss. But that window closed quickly. Looking to throw again on second down. Minshew. And a throw for Pittman is intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. Gets past one man. And he'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there, got a nice interception, and set up their offense in great shape. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. So following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Throwing his hurts. His throw caught at about the five. And the Eagles are gonna have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Hurts sets up to throw it. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. He didn't originally want to run, but he didn't see anything in the passing game, so he scrambled, and wouldn't you know it, he scores a touchdown anyway. It's awfully nice to have a quarterback who can make things happen with his legs.
Elliott now to add the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. To the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. A nice gain of 21 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Running left, Taylor... And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second and nine, Minshew. He's got Granson, his tight end. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. And that is incomplete. Oh, yeah, the defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There's pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Well, the football changing hands here and as this offense takes a field. Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. And they'll begin by running the option. A nice little juke. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat with a first down. But I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Running left, it's Penny. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. A 
The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now they'll run it again with Penny. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. 54 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. And that is incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. They decide against going for it on fourth and one, maybe to the dismay of their offense, but hey, a nice consolation prize down inside the five. Mm, nice consolation prize indeed. So maybe the offense is upset, but they showed confidence in their defense by punting it away. Now Minshew. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. A such a costly interception. Nearly a pick six, but now they're so close, they are knocking on the door for a touchdown. And I never want to get on any team for being aggressive because that's part of what their makeup is, and oftentimes it's successful. But in this case, you've got to be selective about it and make sure you take care of the football. That interception almost cost them six points. Now their defense has to run onto the field, probably giving the quarterback a few side eyes along the way. They've got to see if they can stop a score. Uh, how about this starting field position? First and goal from two yards out. They'll try to run it in, going option right. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Jalen Hurts with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Eagles are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, Charles, he's already proven that he's not afraid to tuck that football down on the option, and he's into the end zone for the second time in the game. And that's exactly what you need from your quarterback, the ability to run the ball fearlessly. And in fact, many quarterbacks will tell you running the football doesn't scare them. Standing in the pocket and taking blindside hits, that's what terrifies them. Elliott good on the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. To the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. This offense returning out there, and really, you remember the last drive, Charles, it was over before it even began. They threw the interception on the very first play. And what that means is for all these guys, it's been a while since they've been out there going full speed. So they've got to get everyone back out there, run a couple of your go-to plays. Make sure you get your offense oiled up a little bit. They've got to be able to start fast, but they've got to be efficient as well. Especially the quarterback. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie. 
rookie mistake there. Second down. He is just not at his focus in this game. It's not one drop. It's not two. That's three for this contest. Yeah, uncharacteristic for any NFL receiver, and he's no exception. Second and ten now. Third quarter action from Philadelphia, PA. Here's Minshew. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And that is incomplete. To clean play, no fouls coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Fielded just inside the 30. It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. And out now come the Eagles. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll run with Penny here out of the shotgun. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. 64 yards on the ground for him so far. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and very short, Hurts. And this is caught by Watkins. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They hold him to only two there on the screen. It's second down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. Hurts throw taken in by Watkins here. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Hurts. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. 
So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. The kick by Elliott is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. To the field goal. Here's Elliott to kick it away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. On second and ten, Minshew. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Minshew, first and ten. He finds his man complete. It's McKenzie. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. It'll be Minshew again. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And he'll find Pittman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The end result, 21 yards. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Minshew's throw going to be caught by McKins. And it's a fumble, and it's picked up by the Eagles. He's got room at the 30. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return and an Eagle touchdown. The offenses have success. You can say they've run wild a little bit. Time for the defenses to get into the act, and one does here. Nothing like a little bit of revenge for the defense. They've had to deal with it all game long. Both offenses going up and down the field. How about it when they take the ball away and take it to the other end zone? Elliott on for the extra point. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And he's been a busy man, five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Now Minshew on first and ten. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Minshew sets to throw. Over the middle, hauled in by Pierce. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. He'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's McKenzie. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. If they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. It's McKenzie. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 40. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And that's caught by the tight end, Granson. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Throwing again on second down. Minshew, quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Again, Minshew looking to throw. And this one too low. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Oh, 
Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Out of the gun is Minshew. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it, and he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And that is incomplete. I think that's a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. They'll run for it. It's Taylor. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. That was fourth and what we would call long in that situation, wasn't it? That wasn't fourth and inches, was it? No, I mean, you get in those situations, fourth and three, fourth and fourth, that's that's a lot to, what, what would you say, a lot of pizza left in that box. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> not everyone dove in on that one. In today's NFL, this is a passing down. All right, this is not a running down. That takes a lot of guts to call that play and even better execution. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I'm not really surprised at all because when you look at this offensive unit, they are loaded across the board. And, of course, the guy throwing them, he's a big-time player himself. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Isaiah McKenzie with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Colts are able to cut into that deficit. He's got them out now to a three score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way and he secured it for six points. Yeah, I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense and he made sure to let his quarterback know just get it to me and the rest was all up to him and he delivered and made it a three score game Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taken in at the three. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start on the ground. It's Rashad Penny. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Back to throw here. Got a man. It's Brown. So the completion good for six yards. And it brings up third and five now. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, 
The defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's Hurts to throw. Steps away to his left. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. Now that's a killer because you think you get it absolutely covered, and then he hot foots it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third, and then the tables turn. From the gun, a give to Penny. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second and 11 now. Hurts. And this one complete to Smith. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. They'll try the right side here with Penny. Down inside the 40. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula, just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Penny up the middle. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Inside handoff, Penny. Well, he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. The kick by Elliott is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure that ah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And the Colts coming out now. But probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because... One team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. 
Throwing on first down is Minshew. Flush to his right. That's complete to Pierce. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Minshew. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll look to throw. The toss here completed to Pittman. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. little surprise here on third and one. Again, he'll drop to throw. He finds Pierce. It's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now Minshew. He's going to air one out. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Gay is on for the point after. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. That time, a six-play drive. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Eagles are going to recover, and that might be enough to put a bow on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout 
as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Hurts down to one knee, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. But there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. It tells a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.